Okay, we're going to do some theory crafting. If you don't like it, well, you can get on out of here. Because math isn't fun when you do this stuff, but oh well. Okay. So, I guess we just jump right into it. So this is going to be Moonkin Theory Crafting, Star Surge versus Starfall. And first of all, we're going to establish a couple things. I have not done this calculation before, other than today. This is my first time doing it as well. So, uh, Star Surge versus Starfall. While most of what you'll hear is scripted, I haven't done the actual final calculations yet. I just know what my final numbers will be based on... Well, not the totals, but I have the uh, parts and I have the parts of it ready to go. So that way, we're all surprised at the uh, end result. So, what do we need to know? Star Surge and Starfall are modified by more than a couple things, and quite frankly, we need to account for them. And Star Surge is affected by spell power, mastery, the empowerment bonus damage, like the filler. Uh, your filler being your solar wrath and your lunar strike and your other things are artifact traits and the astral power cost but we're not going to do uh, astral power cost just yet because that'd be the next one I do and starfall is affected by mostly the same things spell power mastery artifacts astral power but it's also affected by the uh, damage your dots do your haste, and the number of targets. So there's a couple standard variables we can just throw out there right now. Spell power, haste, mastery, and the number of targets. And for this example, we're actually going to use three targets because I figured that'd be a good way to actually test Starfall in a real environment. We already know that Starfall isn't going to be better in a single target, that's just straight up numbers at that point. So we're going to test out if three targets favor Starfall. That's what we're going to do today. And we're only going to use one artifact bonus, which is the uh, Falling Star trait. And even though I have four ranks on uh, Alpha right now, I'm only going to use three. So it's going to be a 45% bonus to uh, Starfall. And the formula I'll have typed out somewhere. I'll probably put it up on uh, this chat box that's on the bottom of the screen. So, filler damage. Like, how do you calculate Star Surge's effective damage? Well, when everything is equal, it's a little bit easier, but we're going to have to standardize it because empowerment bonus damage is what makes Starfall, or sorry, uh, Star Surge, the empowerment bonus damage makes Star Surge a little bit better than what it is at face value. So we need to factor that in. And the only way we're going to do that is to well, calculate it. And that's a pretty straightforward calculation. It's just how much damage Solar Wrath will do, how much it gets via the empowerment bonus, and then you subtract how much it would normally do. That way you're only left with the empowerment portion. So Pretty straightforward. Same thing with Lunar Strike. Same formula, except it has splash damage, and it deals 20% of its damage to nearby enemies within 5 yards. And that would be approximately 70. Yes, 70% uh, spell power coefficient. And the baseline right now is 350. So 350 times 0.2 is 70. And then you multiply that 70 by the number of targets that are currently in play minus one. This is splash damage. So if you have three targets, only two targets are getting hit by the splash. So pretty straightforward. Dot damage is going to be very, very, very complicated. And quite frankly, if you don't understand it, it you're going to have to just let it click over time. You're, it's going to take a little bit of time. You might not understand everything, but if you've done this before, it'll be like more or less a review, and then you'll probably learn something new because 
well, the new mechanic with Starfall in particular. So we're all going to learn today. Now, the best way to do this is to determine all damaging events, direct damage, dot ticks, hard casting. You don't need to calculate their actual damage by using spell power. You just need to have that spell power coefficient at the very end. That's all we really care about, because if you multiply it by spell power, it doesn't really matter. It's a standard variable. So what else do we need to know? Well, we need a way to determine the number of dot ticks, and there is no actual standard way to do this. And the only way to formulate this is to give yourself a casting sequence. So if you want to, say, dot up something, then card cast into them, well, there's your cast sequence. Moonfire, Sunfire, and then you just hard cast into them. That's your casting sequence. It's better if you just spell it out directly, and I'll have an example that we're going to be using for this entire segment. So we also need to know how many targets are in our environment, and we've already established that it's going to be three. We already know what one is. It's going to favor Star Surge. Two, maybe it's on the fence. Three is probably going to favor Starfall, but that's if the math works out. I honestly have no idea. Now, the other really important thing, and probably the most important thing, is the window of execution. How long does it actually last? So if your dots last 22 seconds, great. What if the mob is only alive for 10 seconds? So you're not getting that full damage, right? You need a way to calculate how much effective damage you're getting out of your dots. And when you have much larger times, like 60 seconds or even 5 minutes, you can start using uptime instead, so the percentage that it would be active. And then it'll just even out just due to the law of averages. But for our example, we are going to do a small window, and we're going to use 10 seconds. And yes, it is quite complicated, to be honest. So in order to calculate our dot ticks in a given window, we need the number of targets and how many GCDs we're going to spend overall. And the casting sequence, which not established yet, is probably going to use Moonfire, Sunfire, and Starfall. We know that for a fact. So let's just go ahead and start adding that. If we have three targets, let's figure, okay, we have one Starfall. We have one Sunfire, because it'll spread, and because only one dot gets applied per Moonfire, you'll have to cast Moonfire three times. And that'll be about five GCDs, and in our stats that we're using, we have 20% haste. And that'll be about 6.25 seconds. Mind you, we only have 10 seconds to work with, and we've already used half of that. So, it's not as simple as a straightforward counting of dot ticks. You have to consider offsetting the total number of ticks to actually apply Moonfire, plus the initial tick is an instant for your dots, so you must factor that into the actual formula. It's very complicated, but I'll provide something for you guys to look at, and it's going to scare you, and I'm going to hate myself because I had to do that, and I spent three days on it a long time ago but I have it now. Another thing we need to know is our dot tick interval and moonfire and sunfire tick every two seconds. Not every dot is like that. Some tick every one second, some tick multiple times a second, some tick once every three seconds. We have 20% haste and our two second dot interval goes down to 1.67 seconds. In other words, that's how long it takes for the dot to actually tick and tick thereafter. It's not the same as a GCD, so when you have a small window like we do, these offsetting numbers start impacting the actual outcome a lot more. Maybe you get four ticks, five ticks in a window, but if you actually factor this in properly, you might go down to like one or two. So, it, big difference. Now, the actual math for calculating the, the Effective number of ticks is complicated and quite frankly it's there's no way to simplify it. 
So I'm not going to actually post the formula, but I think I will, because I want to, because you guys would like it. Really? Here we go. It's going to be in chat, and I'll put it up in YouTube when I get the chance. So this is, this is that, and that's for this. Okay, so I'll just look at a couple of things. TOD is time to death. That's basically your window. GCD is GCD. Tick is the tick interval. GCD uh, moonfire. So num MF is the number of moonfires you have active. And there'll be another one with starfall, which is a uh, num uh, sunfire, basically. Uh, num target is the uh, number of targets that are active. So, long story short, you're going to have to not know all of that, and I'll try to get my spreadsheet available to the public today. That way, you know, people can actually play around with it. But that's Moonfire, and Sunfire in chat, again. There you go. This is Sunfire. It doesn't need an offset, because, well... You're going to open with it, so what's the offset that it needs, right? Now, you don't want to get too fancy with your calculations, but sometimes you want to try different things, and, you know, being fancy is sometimes fun. It's also a lot more work. But my casting sequence for our Starfall is going to be Sunfire, Moonfire, Moonfire, Starfall, Moonfire. Now, the spreadsheet will easily cover the first three casts. It's basically just Sunfire on three targets, then two more uh, Moonfires right after that. And then we'll lead into a Starfall and we'll have a Moonfire. So if I spend exactly 3.75 seconds to get to Starfall, because I've spent three C, uh, three GCDs on it, casting uh, Sunfire and Moonfire. I can cast my Starfall at 3.75 seconds. Because it is an immediate effect. So there's no downtime. I don't have to wait for like a tick like I do on a Moonfire and Sunfire. I just get that amplified damage when I put down my Starfall. From there, you can just go, okay... All of my dots before this period will not have my empowered ticks. Makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and calculate how much damage that actually is. Or not damage, uh, how many ticks that actually is. And in my calculator for talent calcs, for shooting stars, I'm going to use that module specifically because, well, it works. So if I put in two active moon fires and my time to death is 10 seconds i will have exactly 10 ticks of moon fire and 15 ticks of sun fire mind you that's only two moon fires just to make that perfectly clear now next thing we're going to want to do is figure out how many ticks starfall is going to get and that's going to be, no, sorry, we're going to figure out that last Moonfire first. May as well just keep going with it, right? So that last Moonfire, if I cast that after Starfall, I would have used four total GCDs. Because one Sunfire, two Moonfires, one Starfall. I'm on my fifth GCD right now. This is going to be my Moonfire. So I have... Four GCDs used, and I have five seconds spent. So, how many ticks can I get on that very last Moonfire? Now, a trick to this is, well, my window is five seconds. I have to apply it. Why not just change my time to death for that particular dot to five seconds, and then I can just change my active Moonfire down to one. 
and I can clearly see that I get two ticks on this final Moonfire. So two ticks, three total hard casts, and now I have nothing but extra time. So to recalculate everything, I have exactly 12 Moonfire ticks and 15 Sunfire ticks. Now we get to calculate Starfall. So continuing from our casting sequence, I'll cast my Starfall on my fourth GCD, which is the end of the third timing-wise. It's not like I'm casting at the end of the fourth, because sometimes numbers get a little wobbly when you do that. I immediately get the benefit, so I have to start my calculation as early as possible. So basically at the 3.75 mark. With 20% haste, I know Starfall scales with haste. So if I take 8 seconds, which is the baseline duration of Starfall, I modify that by 20% haste. That's going to be exactly 6.67 seconds. So my Starfall is going to last pretty much 60% of the time. And the actual number is going to be 3.75, so the moment where we cast it, plus its total duration, so 6.67. And that'll equate to 10.42 seconds. So it's a little bit over the uh, execution window that we have, which is perfectly fine. We can just take the difference because we know it's going to be up for the entire window, and it's going to have a 62.5% uptime. Now, if we're using something if we're using a larger window, uptime would be more important, but for now we don't really need to worry about it because we're using such precise numbers. And we know Starfall will deal exactly 8 ticks. Even though it's hasted, it'll still deal 8 ticks. It doesn't get a partial tick. It doesn't get more ticks. It just lowers the actual duration. It ticks faster, but same number of ticks, same damage basically. So we'll need to cut back on the Starfall damage because we already know it lasts too long. So at 6.67 seconds, an eighth of that is 0 0.83 seconds. That's one tick, basically. To keep it simple, we're just removing one tick because we have to get our execution window in line with our Starfall duration. And the only way to do that is to lower Starfall's damage by removing a tick. So we're going to count the existing damaging events right now. Uh, whatever deals damage, we're going to track it, basically. Right now we have Starfall ticking seven times, and that's going to be on three targets. Remember, we're still using three targets. Moonfire is going to deal direct damage three times. Moonfire is going to tick 12 times. And because we know... Two of those ticks won't be empowered. We can just say, okay, 12 minus 2 is 10. So, pretty straightforward. We have 10 empowered ticks. That's pretty important to know, though. I mean, that could be a big difference. Sunfire, pretty straightforward. It dealt damage one time. Or, sorry, dealt direct damage one time. And it ticked 15 times. Now, in that window of 3.75 seconds where Starfall is not active, Sunfire actually ticked 6 total times. So if we have 15 ticks, take away 6, 9 of them are empowered. We have 5 seconds remaining to work with. Uh, so we don't stop there obviously, we, we get to cast some spells, right? Lunar Strike, Solar Flare, mostly Lunar Strike because there's more than 2 targets. We already know Lunar Strike is better than Solar Wrath with two or more enemies piled up. We have three. Lunar Strike is pretty much hands down better. Don't know about Empowered Solar Wrath versus not empowered Lunar Strike, but I'm just going to keep it simple for now. Uh, we have five seconds to work with, right? And if we reduce the cast time of Lunar Strike by haste, that is 20% haste again, a 2.5 second cast will drop down to 2.083 seconds. 
basically we have enough to fill that time with two Lunar Strike casts. You have to be able to complete a hard cast in order to calculate it effectively. Yes, you can cast a third one, but you won't actually get the damage, so there's no point in doing that. So we need to figure out what we're going to do with that downtime. We're going to have less than a second left. You may as well just put a Moonfire in there. It's not going to do any other damage other than the direct damage, but it's damage. May as well get it while you can, right? So here's our absolute final total for Starfall's cast sequence. Starfall will tick seven times on three targets. Moonfire dealt direct damage four times. It ticked 12 times, 10 of them are empowered. Sunfire ticked 15 times, nine of them are empowered. Lunar Strike was cast two times, splashed to two nearby enemies each time. It was not empowered at all. So it's a lot of work, and all we wanted to do was find out how much damage that little cast sequence did. It seems like a lot more work than it was needed, but that's actually what you need to do in order to get a decent calculation going. So this is actually one of the more complicated parts of it, the actual math. When you start playing around with the cast sequence and just putting things together to see how they fit and eventually how they math out, it's pretty straightforward. When you have calculators and spreadsheets doing this, you go a lot faster. Maybe not the pace that we're going right now, like I'm talking this fast, but when you're doing spreadsheet calculations versus trying to figure out for the first time, you'll probably go about 10 times faster. Like I said earlier, just to figure out how many dot ticks I was getting in a certain window, that took me three days to write, debug, test, debug, do that 50 times and for three days. And it's still not perfect, but you know, it's better than what I've been able to find otherwise and what I've been able to make outside of that. So once you have that down, everything goes by really fast. So that's why spreadsheets are really important to have. They just make everything much, much simpler for you. So that pretty much concludes starfall and dot damage for that cast sequence. We only wanted the damaging events here. We don't actually need to calculate their damage yet. We just want to know what is going to do damage. That way we can just plug in the numbers and there we go, off to the races. The next one we're going to do is filler damage. And I'm going to open with a question. What should I do differently from the cast sequence before? Uh, we're going to open with Sunfire, obviously. Should I cast all three Moonfires in a row? Probably. So let's do that. And because Starfall would be up next, may as well put Star Surge there because we want to empower our next casting spells, right? Uh, Lunar Strike and Solar Wrath. So our cast sequence for Star Surge is going to be Sunfire, Moonfire, Moonfire, Moonfire. So three Moonfires in a row. Star Surge, Lunar Strike, then Solar Wrath because you want to use your empowerments, right? We'll get to the remaining time when we work there. Let's just figure out what we get. So because we opened with Sunfire again, we know it's going to tick 15 times. There's no star fall to empower it, so it's just going to tick 15 times. There's no empowerment. And we're going to have to recalculate Moonfire. And when we do that, we'll see three Moonfires in a row, and that'll equate to 14 ticks overall. So we actually got more ticks by casting Moonfire earlier. Wow, go figure, right? Makes sense. Now our remaining time is going to be five seconds for hard casting because, well, we casted Star Surge, right? So we have five GCDs used. Sorry, we used four GCDs. Then we used Star Surge. And then we're gonna have yeah, we're gonna have five seconds left for hard casting. So we're gonna have Lunar Strike going at two point zero eight seconds, and Solar Wrath is basically equated to the uh, the GCD because it's one and a half seconds and one and a half seconds and one and a half seconds. That's one point two five second cast time. 
So our initial tally is Moonfire dealt direct damage three times, Moonfire ticked 14 times, Sunfire dealt direct damage one time, ticked 15 times, Star Surge was cast one time, Lunar Strike was cast one time and hit two additional enemies, and it was empowered, and Solar Wrath was cast one time, and it was also empowered. Now, our time remaining is going to be about 1.67 seconds. With that time remaining, we can probably fit a Solar Wrath in there. We have plenty of time for that. When we do that, now we have 0 0.42 seconds remaining, which we can only fill with a Moonfire. So we're going to do that. We're going to fill with a Moonfire. Now to update that final tally, Moonfire dealt direct damage four times, ticked 14 times, Sunfire de dealt direct damage one time, and ticked 15 times, Star Surge was cast once, Lunar Strike was cast one time, hit two additional targets, and it was empowered, Solar Wrath was cast two times, and it was only empowered for one of those, and because it doesn't do anything special, like a splash damage, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the, the spell itself being empowered one time. So we have all of our tallied spells done, and that quite literally is the most difficult part. We're almost done, I promise. And rather than recalculate everything, because I don't want to go back and calculate the same thing over and over, if we're comparing them, it's safe to say we can just remove things that are similar. For example, if Moonfire, if Moonfire was cast four times for both of them, which they were, you can just cancel them out. And we can adjust our cast sequences to get the pre-calculated results. So if you get rid of the Moonfire direct damage, you get rid of the Sunfire direct damage, maybe Lunar Strike was replicated somewhere, Solar Wrath wasn't, but maybe it was. It wasn't, but, you know, if it was there, you can remove it. Now, Starfall is going to have a cast sequence that reads like this. Moonfire dealt 10 empowered ticks. Sunfire had 9 empowered ticks. Starfall ticked 7 times on 3 targets. Lunar Strike was cast two times and hit two enemy targets. It was not empowered. That was just Starfall's cast sequence after we uh, adjust for the like terms. Now, Star Surge's cast sequence, well, an empowered tick and a basic tick are different, so we already removed the basic ticks from uh, Starfall, and we took the same amount away from Moonfire. So Moonfire used to have 14 basic ticks, but now it only has 12, because we took away two. And Moonfire, or sorry, Sunfire, six were not empowered? Well, it ticked six times, then. That's the only difference. Star Surge was used one time. Lunar Strike was cast one time. It hit two enemies, and it was empowered. Solar Wrath was cast twice, and one was empowered. Since Moonfire and Sunfire have the same spell power coefficient, meaning they deal the same amount of damage per periodic tick, you can just combine them together. It's the same thing as if X equals Y, then Y equals X. So, so long as you just play around with those two, you can combine them any way you want. So, for Starfall's sequence, we have 19 empowered ticks, and Star Surge has 18 basic ticks. Not bad. That's all it is. Basically, we took a pretty good sized list and we cut it down to maybe four or five things per. It's not that big of a deal, pretty easy to calculate at that point. So now we're going to have to compile all of our spell power coefficients, meaning let's start getting the basic damage down before we actually calculate spell power. So if dots deal 
84% damage per tick, 84% of spell power per tick. You can just multiply that by your spell power and you're done. We can also modify it by mastery and things like that, any other modifiers that will affect it. Lunar Strike deals a baseline amount of 350% spell power, and the splash damage is 70 of 70% 70 of your spell power, and that's the same as just saying 20% of the uh, initial damage. Solar Wrath is a standard 257.2, yeah, 257.2 for Solar Wrath. Star Surge is 600% spell power. Star Fall is 23.625 spell power coefficient per tick. Since we have multiple ticks, it's a little bit more than what you see at face value. So now we need to find out our modifiers. And we've already done uh, haste calculations. Everything's already factoring in haste. So we don't need to really consider it at this point. We've already done it. But we still need to contribute mastery to the formula. So with 30% mastery, Starfall and Star Surge deal 30% more damage. And our baseline bonuses to spells that they empower is 20%. So if we have 30% mastery, you add that to the baseline and you have a 50% bonus damage and that's 50% bonus damage to Lunar Strike and Solar Wrath. With Falling Star, the artifact trait, it's going to be approximately 72.5% more damage. So you're going to put 1.725 when you multiply that by a whole number. The actual formula for Shooting Stars, or for Falling Star right now, and Starfall in general is really, really difficult. Um, it's not difficult in the sense that it's hard to do. It's just not standard, if that makes sense. And let me see if I can lower my output real quick. So... Falling Star deals quite a bit of damage because it's a pretty big bonus overall. And part of that is due to how many ranks you have in it. And I happen to have four, but sometimes it's not as good as that. You're gonna have to work with what you get. I turned down my bitrate, so hopefully it doesn't, you know, go up too high. Hopefully the bitrate's a little bit better. I turned it down a pretty fair amount. I'll turn it down even more, actually. Okay. Continuing. Falling Star is 1.725 bonus. That's just your modifier. It's just like mastery, essentially. You just multiply it straight across. And the reason you get that is because the formula is kind of wonky and just, just got to live with it sometimes. The filler damage we're going to have to do Sorry. The filler damage is going to be Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike. And Solar Wrath is going to be 57 point, or sorry, 257.2 times 1.3, your mastery, minus 257.2. And that would be multiplied by your spell power when you get there. That would be Solar Wrath Empowered Cast versus the Basic Cast. You can just calculate straight across. You don't have to m subtract the... Uh, baseline amount. That's only if you want to find out the true value of Star Surge by itself. Since we're calculating it into it anyway, you can just go straight across because the individual cast is there. Lunar Strike 
basically the same thing. 350% times your mastery, which is 1.3. And other than subtracting that baseline amount, you can subtract the... Uh, sorry, you have to add in your splash damage. So 20% of that standard amount times the number of targets hit times your mastery. That's your empowered stuff. So I know it seems like a lot of work, but really we're almost done. Like we're getting ready to actually start calculating things. It might be three, four minutes before we're finished here. So Starfall's cast sequence, just to go over it again and give you the final spell power coefficient output is as follows. Starfall, or sorry, Starfall cast sequence and our dots ticked 19 times while empowered. So, reading the formula across, that's going to be 84% times 1.725 times 19, and that's going to be 144.9 times 19, which is going to be 2,753.1, and that's going to be your spell power coefficient for that. So, that's a pretty big amount. That's not a small number. Now, Starfall ticked seven times on three targets. Okay. 23.625 spell power coefficient times seven times three, and because it's affected by mastery, times 1.3, that's going to be uh, 496.125 times your mastery. And that's going to be 645% spell power coefficient. So our next one is going to be Lunar Strike. And it was cast two times and hit two nearby enemies. Neither of the spell casts were empowered. So that's going to be 350 plus 70 times 2. And that's going to be uh, 490. Since we cast it twice times 2. 490 times 2 is 980. So just to go recap that real quick, our dots did 2,753.1, Starfall did 645, and Lunar Strike did 980. The next one is going to be Star Search. We had 18 basic ticks, so 84 times 18. And because there's no bonus from empowerment, Starfall debuff empowerment, 84 times 18 is going to be 1,512 spell, uh, spell power coefficient. Star Surge was used once, and it's modified by mastery, so 600% times 1.3 is 780 and Lunar Strike was cast one time hit two enemies each and it was empowered so 350% times 70 times 2 times empowerment which is 1.5 is 490 times 1.5 that is 735 Solar Wrath was cast twice and one of it was empowered so baseline Solar Wrath is going to be 257.2 times your uh, uh, times your empowerment multiplier which is going to be 1.5 that's going to be 385.8 so 385.8 plus your non-empowered cast 385.8 plus 257.2 is going to equal 643% uh, spell power coefficient so recapping star surge and then I promise we're almost done basic ticks were 1512 Star Surge was 800, or sorry, Star Surge was 780, Lunar Strike was 735, Solar Wrath was 643. 
Now, the final calculation is here. And trust me, I'm about ready to be done as much as you are. So, you can probably guess what will be better if you just kind of did the uh, little addition in your head. But if you didn't, you'll notice it's about a 20% uh, difference, 19.3% to be exact. Star Surge did 3,670% spell power coefficient. Now, Star Fall did 20% more. It did 4,378.1% spell power coefficient. That's on three targets. The window was 10 seconds long, and that was using my exampled casting sequences. Starfall was used fourth in line, whereas Star Surge was used fifth in line. That's because I wanted to get the maximum uptime for the impairments and Starfall's uptime as well. If you change something around, those numbers might change. In most cases, they do change. So the reason why you want to know how to calculate all of these individual events is not so that you can have a better model, it's so that you can have the right answer. When you have the right answer, it means your model's good. Having a better model is fine, but it's only a certain point you need it. So our final conclusion is Starfall is better on three targets given that cast sequence. If anything dies before, if things go a little differently, like you have to stop casting for whatever reason, things will change. This is a best case scenario given the environment I set. So that's how you do the math, and I will try to make the spreadsheet available. That way you can just put in some numbers and you'll be done with it. Because, like I said, I think we're about ready to be done. And that's all I have, and I'll find a way to get this thing public. So let's have at it.